Welcome to this lecture series on LBJ, the Great Society, and the Vietnam War. We're going to begin with Part 1, the Civil Rights Act. So on November 22, 1963, John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas. And on the tarmac of Love Field on Air Force One, Lyndon Baines Johnson was sworn in as President of the United States. Okay. A year later, he will be elected in his own right in a presidential election, which will see him uh, achieve the largest uh, margin in the popular vote in modern history. Right? But he's going to inherit a United States in crisis, a United States that was at the zenith of its civil rights movement with an active civil rights bill going through Congress, a civil rights bill that Johnson wants passed, and an escalating situation in Vietnam. The Eisenhower administration had supported the French in uh, Vietnam and had sent 600 advisors there. Under the Kennedy administration, that 600 advisors had escalated into 16,000 American troops at the time of his death. Both of these are going to shape the legacy of Lyndon Baines Johnson, one in a positive light and one in a very negative light. The first of these, the Civil Rights Movement, is something that mostly gets, uh, the credit gets pressed onto JFK. And there's actually a reason for this. Now, if you've watched the previous lecture series, you know this, that JFK really was kind of a Johnny-come-lately to civil rights until probably about June of 1963, uh, literally just a few months before his, his demise, right? But Lyndon Johnson was already a proponent of civil rights. And so when he obtained the presidency, one of his first goals is going to be getting this Civil Rights Act passed. Now, his own advisors are going to tell him, hey, we've just had an assassination of the president. The world's in shock. The U.S. is in shock. Let's just drop the civil rights issue for a bit. Don't bring it up. But Johnson is a good politician, and Johnson's going to get what Johnson wants. And you see this in the very first speech he gives to a joint session of Congress. On the 27th of November... 1963, five days after the death of John F. Kennedy, he will give a, a speech to Congress where he will begin playing his political cards to try and get this civil rights bill passed. He'll say, no words are strong enough to express our determination to continue forward the thrust of America that he began, referring to JFK. No memorial oration or eulogy could more eloquently honor President Kennedy's memory than the earliest possible passage of the Civil Rights Bill for which he fought so long. Fought so long? He gave one speech. One speech in June of 1963. That's it. He's going to play every political card he can because Johnson wants this bill passed. Johnson's going to play the martyr card. We will hang this all on JFK. We'll give him credit for it so I can get what I want. And Johnson's not going to stop there. There's a lot of opposition to this Civil Rights Act from his own party at that. Remember, the Democrats and the Southern Democrats in particular do not want a Civil Rights Act passed. They don't want the end of segregation. So Georgian Democrat Richard Russell is actually going to announce that when it hits the floor of the Senate, he is going to filibuster it to death. It'll never see a vote on the floor of the Senate. So Johnson, along with playing the martyr card, do it for Jack, right? He is going to also begin playing all the other cards in his bag of tricks. He's been in Washington politics for decades as a member of the House of Representatives, the Senate, vice president. Uh, and so he's going to begin calling in favors calling people up, reminding them of certain stories he knows about him that maybe maybe don't want leaked out there to the press, right? And as you can see by these pictures, he's clearly not even, uh, he doesn't have an issue with uh, even getting into their personal space, right? My personal favorite is that one on the left. And you see, I mean, that guy's smiling, but look at the body language. He's clearly uncomfortable, right? Johnson's going to get what Johnson wants. And this works. He gets the bill to pass. Right. When it hits the floor of the Senate, um, Richard Russell can't filibuster it. It gets passed by a vote of 73 to 27. Right. 73 to 27, a filibuster proof uh, passage of the 27 that voted against it. Twenty one of them were Democrats. It was those Southern Democrats. And it's going to cost Johnson in the 1964 election as the he's going to lose the Southern Democrat South. Now, it won't matter. Right. He's still going to get a very wide margin of victory. 
The bill will hit his desk on the 2nd of July of 1964, and he will sign the Civil Rights Act of 1964 into law. The film footage of the signing of this bill always cracked me up when I watch it because Johnson realized how historic this was, and so he made sure that several prominent people were there for the actual signing, including Martin Luther King Jr., who he had over his left shoulder. And he had he kept fretting over the number of pens he had. He signed it one letter at a time and gave away the pens so everybody in that room could own a pen that had signed the Civil Rights Act of 1964 into law. It was a very important piece of legislation. It made racial discrimination in public places, such as theaters, restaurants, hotels, of any kind of things like that, illegal. It required employers to provide equal employment opportunities, right, and to end all discriminatory uh, practices. It, uh, any projects that involved any kind of federal funding could now be completely cut off uh, if, it, if there was evidence of dis discrimination based on color, race, or national origin, right? Uh, it also attempted to deal with African Americans being denied the vote in the Deep South. Some of these little tricks that the Southerners were doing to keep the votes, uh, keep African Americans from voting. The legislation stated that uniform standards must be must uh, prevail for the establishment of the rights to vote. Right? Uh, schooling. Um, it also included a, a provision for women in it. it. said, no person in the United States shall on basis of sex be excluded from participating in, be, be denied the benefits of, or subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assist assistance, right? So this is a pretty sweeping piece of civil rights legislation. It's not perfect, though, because, like, for example, with voting uh, rights, Southerners will find other creative ways in order to prevent African Americans from voting, doing things like closing the county clerk's office if you get a group of African Americans coming in to register, things like that. Uh, and so Johnson is actually going to push for a follow-up Civil Rights Act called the Voting Rights Act in 1965. And again, his own backers are going to say, don't do it. You got one passed, and that was a miracle. And there's no way you'll ever get two civil rights bill passed in two years' time, but Johnson's going to get what Johnson wants. And in 1965, we'll have the passage of the Voter Voting Rights Act, which eliminated poll taxes, literacy tests, and all these other practices that were being used to discriminate against African Americans in preventing them from voting. <laughs> 